Today I'm making a delicious ginger spice Jamaican cake. Now this cake is really rich and all these really nice spices like ginger and cinnamon and nutmeg and the incredible richness from the treacle and dark brown sugar. Now, to start this cake, I'm going to set my oven to preheat at 170 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to begin by putting 300 grams of butter into my stand mixer. Now this butter needs to be soft and preferably unsalted. I'm then going to add in about 330 grams or one or two third cups of dark brown sugar. Now if you don't have dark brown sugar, normal brown sugar is fine. I'm then going to come along and add three quarters of a cup of treacle. Now depending where you're from in the world, um, I think in America it's called molasses, um, in Australia treacle. It's this sort of really dark sugary substance which really adds a lot of depth and that dark colour and richness to this cake. We then want to add a quarter of a cup of golden syrup. And once these are added to your bowl, you just want to give this a really nice beat for a few good few minutes, just until everything's nice and combined and that butter's nice and fluffy. Now once that's nicely combined, I want to come in and add a quarter of a cup of vegetable oil. This will just help moisten the cake and work well with the butter to create a nice flavour but also keep it really moist for a long time. I'm then going to add a teaspoon of vanilla, just for some extra flavour, six large eggs, and a quarter of a cup of sour cream. Now I'm just going to mix these fairly well until combined and again remembering you want to add your eggs one at a time just nice and slowly so it's well combined. This is a, quite a big cake so you just need to mix things in gradually. Different to something smaller where you can mix things in more quickly, you just want to mix things in slowly. Now let's move on to the spices. So I have here measured out five tablespoons of ginger. Now as I said it's a big ginger cake, uh, so five tablespoons. Um, you can add three or four if you don't like maybe such a strong ginger flavour. Um, so I also like to add about a tablespoon of cinnamon, and then a teaspoon of nutmeg and a teaspoon of allspice. And this just creates a really nice, rich and diverse flavour. And I've sifted out three and a quarter cups of self-raising flour. So when all your wet ingredients are combined, I'm just going to add the spices to the flour and gradually add this while I mix the mixture slowly. You don't, you don't want to overmix it, just mix it until it's combined. Alright, so all my ingredients are now in here. I'm just going to give it one quick last mix around to make sure that everything's combined, everything's off the bottom, but the smell of the ginger and the spices is just incredible. It's kind of like when you make gingerbread, but it's a cake. Now, as I said, it's important not to overmix this if you're using a stand mixer um, or handheld beaters because you don't want to overwork that flour. If you overwork the flour, it'll become really chewy and it's like when you make bread, it'll be hard, it won't be very nice. Okay, so that's all done. I've got three cake containers. I think these are about nine inch. Um, you could make a two-layer two cake if you want to, just probably get some cake tins that are a little bit bigger. I'm just going to spoon these into each container and then I'm going to bake these for about 22 to 25 minutes in the oven. Um, remembering as well, if you do two layers, just bake it a little bit longer. But yeah, the way to know if it's ready, stick a toothpick in it. If it comes out clean, it is ready. Alright, so my cakes have come out of the oven. They're looking great. I've had them out just cooling down for about an hour. You want them to be cool before um, icing them as obviously the icing will melt and run everywhere. Uh, but yeah, let's move on and start the icing. I'm making a cream cheese buttercream. So this will be nice and kind of nice, light, also kind of richy from the cheese, but it won't be overwhelming as a lot of that flavor and spice will be coming from the cake. So we want a nice balance between that. So to begin, I'm gonna add 150 grams of softened butter to my mixer. And I'm going to beat this for a good four or five minutes. I want lots of air to come into this and to become nice and light. So once my butter is nicely whipped, I want to add 250 grams of softened cream cheese. Now again, this cream cheese I want to whip for about a minute or so, a minute or two. I want it to whip in nicely with that butter. And once that's whipped in, I can add a little splash of vanilla extract. And then I'm going to add my icing sugar. Now my icing sugar, we're using about 800 grams here, probably a good six cups worth. Um, again, you, you add a bit at a time, mix it in, and you'll eventually get to that right consistency. Now, just remember too, when you whip in your icing sugar, you do not want to put in too much at once. So you want to add probably a cup or two at a time and just very slowly mix it in. So either if you're doing it by hand, with a handheld mixer, or a stand mixer like myself, add a bit at a time, and if you try to mix it too quickly, it will create a cloud of icing sugar and it'll cause a big mess, trust me. So once it's combined, whip it for probably a good 30 seconds on medium to high, and then repeat this process until all of your all of your icing sugar has been combined. Okay, so I finished my icing. It's a nice, really tasty buttercream cream cheese icing. Now, I've got my turntable here. I find it's easiest to ice this on something that spins. 
and I like to use a palette knife as well just so I can spread the icing over easily. Now I'm going to start with the first one on here but usually it's easy if you grab a little bit of your icing and just spread it on the base of whatever you're stacking your cakes on. Just in the middle, just so it sticks. Um, the one thing I have noticed today, it is actually really quite cold here today and the icing is much um, thicker and harder than usual. Um, to really go about this, you could, I could leave it out for a little while. I'm just going to go ahead and see how I go, but it will just make it a bit harder to spread on the cake. So I'm going to start with the first layer. Um, I'm going to choose one that's quite nice and flat and even. You can also cut the tops of these, of these cakes to make a flatter topping. I'm not really too bothered about that. Um, but I'm just going to start, I'm going to gently grab one and pop it down in the middle, obviously with clean hands. There we go. And then I'm just going to cover the top of this with the icing. Now I'm not going to make it too thick because there are three layers here, but just enough to cover the top generously. I think this cake's really cool because when I mean, you can see from the colour, that dark brown sugar and the treacle, um, just all that rich, all that richness gives this cake such a really cool, nice dark colour. And for that reason, I'm thinking I might not actually even ice around the outside. I'll ice, as you can see, on the top, but I quite like seeing the different colours down the sides. And I'll neaten it all up um, with the icing and stuff, but. I think that it looks quite interesting. I think it's good to show off because it's very easy to make a simple either chocolate cake or, or just a vanilla cake, but creating something like this is quite cool and I think it can be good to show off that obviously there's very interesting flavors going on in this cake. All right, so it's all iced, but I just want to grab some, well here in Australia we have some cookies called ginger snap cookies and they're really hard gingery cookies. Um, I'm going to sprinkle some on top of here just to, you know, give the idea that this is a ginger cake. And here we go, I just finished it off by, it was really tough at snapping some of those um, hard ginger cookies. I uh, said so I've, I've left the sides clear to see into that dark rich cake, so I think it looks really cool. It's a really dark rich colour, all the caramelisation looks really delicious and I cannot wait to try it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, I hope you really enjoyed the video. Uh, if you liked it, please um, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll be making some more yummy sweets soon.